Um, all right, I've got our agenda pulled up. Um, you know, we have, I don't know if we did this last time, but uh, should we do a, just a quick check-in? How are we all doing? Um, I can start. I am good. Um, got away with my family last week for a little Vermont staycation up near Crassberry. Um, did a lot of cross-country skiing, which was awesome, and a much-needed change of scenery. So feeling pretty refreshed from that. Hey, Shana, we're just starting with some check-ins. Thank you. Sorry I'm late. I was running late. No, no real excuse. <laughs> How old are your kids, Jeremy? Uh, five, 10, and 12. I just am blown away with the uh, like the ability of kids up here to to do things like ski and stuff. Well, it's no, I'm blown away too, and they're my kids. Um, <laughs> my five year old, I've been downhill skiing with her this year too, and she's just like amazing, like bombing down the mountain without a fear in the world. So it, yeah, it's great to watch. Wild. Shana, it's Michael Sherman. He's on the call. We're starting. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. I, uh, I had to block my screen. All right. Bye. Oh. I'm glad that was caught on the recording. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I was waiting so late. <laughs> Have you already said congratulations to Lauren as well? Is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> All right, let's keep checking in. Who's going to go next? I can go. My kids, 14 and 12, were at home. They had a winter break for 12 days, and they just started school today. And I think my holiday <laughs> will start today, mm -hmm. plus working, right? Other than that, uh, there was nothing new in my life. So everything is smooth, and we are still healthy and waiting for the vaccination. I have asthma, but I checked the high risk group. Apparently I'm not in it. So just waiting to hear um, so I can go and get my um, vaccination and be ready for rest of the year. So that's all. Do professors count as educators or is that all like K through 12 school? My my kids? No, for I don't. Aren't you? Don't you teach at Norwich? Would you yeah, count under I, that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I teach online, uh, so I'm at home. Um, oh. Yeah, but um, yeah, Matthew will get in for that one. Yeah, I I heard that teachers are having their vaccinations soon. Yeah, uh, which is a good news. I have lots of friends who are teachers, and they were really anxious, and you know because uh, most of them are like doing face-to-face -face, uh, yeah. teaching. So I'm relieved for them. Now I'm waiting for my turn. <laughs> yeah. I can check in quickly. Um, yeah, very excited and grateful to be back for another term. And I've been working very hard with some amazing volunteers for this little, little city council race, um, which has been fun and um, now I feel like I need a break to <laughs> get, get caught up in some sleep but um, but it's been it's been great and just so excited to get to continue this work and some other great projects uh, in this role so thanks to everyone who who helped in many ways um, I had nothing special to report except I got my second COVID shot and, and Yay. Uh, and did not have the the reaction that I guess sixty percent of the people do. But anyway, it was easy, and now I'm just waiting out my last two weeks before I'm uh, super immune. Yeah, <laughs> flaunting it around town, surely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and I just got a date for what I mean, not a date for what I'm getting it, but I'm type one diabetic, so I'm now on the list for March fifteenth, and I'm like, woo! I had a little. <laughs> party and yeah very very excited because i've been very 
um, obnoxiously careful. And I probably, I was also, I was like, I'm not sure how much of that is going to change once we get the vaccine. You're like, my parents aren't vaccinated yet and other things, but, um, but I'm feeling really, really hopeful. Yeah. Um, Cameron, have you been? Uh, can't complain. Same as always. Um, uh, you know, yesterday was town meeting day. We had a really great turnout and um, overwhelming uh, margins for the budget. So that is a, a big source of work that's behind us since now we can move forward with that budget. So I'm really excited. Um, I have nothing personal to share because I have done nothing. And uh, so work's all I got. We're doing good. Thanks, yeah. all. Right. Should I kick us off here? Anna, do you want me to keep... Yeah. What's up? Wait, sorry. Do you want me to keep us going, or you want to take the reins? Uh, feel free to keep us going. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm so yeah. Great. Thank you, Jeremy. <laughs> uh, I can do that. Um, so next step is just to review and approve the February minutes that Michael sent. Um, few days ago. Has everyone had a chance to just quickly review those and anyone have any suggestions or edits? I move we adapt the minutes. I can second. Okay. Who, who I got I missed it. Who 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 made the motion? Lauren. It was me. Oh, okay, Lauren. Um, all those in favor of adopting the minutes, say aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. The minutes passed. All right, moving along. Um, our learning roundtable. Uh, anyone have anything to share of interest to the group and our work? Um, any learning, reading, etc. I actually do. Um, I've been going. There's a um, a couple different um, LGBTQIA groups. Um, that came together and held a bunch of forums for uh, that group. Um, uh, and I belonged to that. So I went to those. Um, and there was a couple, there was like one on aging and housing and um, racial justice. And they've led to some really interesting conversations. And we had a meeting last night um, uh, that was sort of like the culmination of this series that had a couple of our um, state legislature on the call and we sort of talked about if we had funding and like funding was not an option or not an uh, uh, uh what am i thinking of what are the words anyway if funding was not an issue what would we be focused on and um i um had, there was a lot of insights there um and that report i think is they're sort of compiling all of that and we'll have a report that i would love to share with y'all when it comes to fruition, but um, you know, some of the really big takeaways were um, asking the legislature that was there to really support the position that they created in the state. The um, I can't remember what her title is necessarily, but I know she's like the equity person for the state, and really funding that in a way where it can be useful instead of um, just sort of a check the box position. And then um, really recognizing the need for uh, Wi-Fi infrastructure and other like, you know, um, uh, ways to connect our rural communities. And then talked about um, aging in place, which is a big concern, you know, um, and how that sort of ties into everything. Um, and there was a couple um, folks that I talked to who were really interested in like bringing the city 
um, some proposals for like congregate living spaces, intergenerational spaces, which I thought was really interesting. So as soon as I have like something tangible that I can like give you out of that, I will definitely share that information. But they were really cool and I'm glad that they happened. I meet a lot of really neat people. Great, thanks for sharing that. I can, I can share, I um, did this Jewish organizing fellowship um, in Boston called Join for Justice, Jewish Organizing and Student Network um, after college. And I just got, um, they are doing like a, an online um, organizer training program with different like cohorts for like clergy and for, um, oh God, I'm just, like Pittsburgh area Jews. And, thing. and then there's also like a cohort for Jews with disabilities that I got asked to be a trainer in. So it's like a seven week long series and they, they're providing like the content, but then like to like hold the, hold the groups and stuff. And there's just like a lot of really incredible readings as part of it, both with around like disability justice, like that everyone's doing. Um, and then also um, just around like the state of the world that we're in. And so I'm like trying to find, like not be like, here's the full curriculum because it's a lot of reading, but I'll see if I can find one and I'll maybe share it um, in the chat later on. But it's, it's just a lot of, um, you know, uh, a, of, you know, during, during COVID right now, like how are, you know, um, in, indigenous folks getting to the polls and responding to like is it, you know there's like articles just about like kind of all all sorts of different stuff that's kind of part of like the opening and then we'll be getting more into like the training parts but um i just hadn't read some of these articles and i thought they were really powerful so i will i will find one drop in the chat cool thank you Anyone else have anything to share? Okay, uh, let's keep going then. Uh, so let's hear some updates from the various city committees that members are involved with. Um, so I know we've got the police review committee. Um, is that our only one? Or maybe the community, the community fund committee to Michael um, and anything from the city, but why don't we start with the police, police review. Lauren, you want to talk for the police review committee? Um, so I can give an update and Michael um, flesh it out. So one of the big efforts we're doing right now is um, outreach. So um, there is both partnership with the creative uh, discourse crew for some of the outreach and then um, doing some other uh, outreach for some groups that aren't part of the creative discourse like um, victims of violence or survivors of violence um, and some other groups and so we're kind of in the process of figuring out how to uh, how to do that outreach to um, connect with people and, and learn from people but do it in a way that doesn't create harm so that's kind of an ongoing process of, of figuring out, but that will be a, a big priority of that group. Um, where, uh, you know, which kind of intersects with this, uh, this effort, of course. So that's a big area of focus. And then there's just a bunch of like research and, you know, looking into um, different policies. Um, and as that gets, I think, a little bit more um, kind of laid out, then it might be worth sharing some of that with you all just to get input um, if you, you know, for whoever's interested. I don't think the group needs to, to do to do it formally, but just knowing that you all might be interested in looking at that, you know, as that starts to shake, take shape for like report and recommendations and like the kind of vision for um, community safety, it would be, um, I think it would be great to share with you all for, um, for whatever input you would want to provide. Um, and I think April 5th is going to be a general public meeting. So once we get the details on that, we can share it. Um, I think those are the highlights. I don't know, Michael or Cameron, what else? Good, it's good. Is the committee planning to make some kind of present initial presentation at that public forum for folks to respond to, or is it more just seeking perspectives from community folks? 
we're still in the discovery stage. So I think we have no, <clears throat> uh, we've been meeting with various folks. Um, uh, we had um, uh, Rory uh, Thibault, the state's attorney for Washington County, met with us. Um, and then um, Ari, what was his last name from the, the, uh, the public defenders um, group met with us uh, last time. Um, and um, we're, we're, we're doing, we, we've blocked all, each of us has an assignment of one or two topics to collect information and uh, send, send questions along to Chief Pete. Um, and we're trying to just continue getting information before we start making any public comments. So the, that, that April 5th um, meeting will, yeah. will also be information gathering. Okay. Um, um, and there's, there's nothing much to report from the community uh, fund um, with the passing of the budget all of our recommendations were then appro were therefore approved so um, you know we're, we're done <laughs> until next November so that's really that's the cadence you'll kind of um, lay low until November well, well, yeah, I mean, we meet um, once or twice in the middle, uh, in the interim to review our um, our application to make sure that, you know, to see what, what uh, turned up in the years in the previous cycles, um, previous cycle that might warrant some further changes to the guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, and then we meet shortly, we meet again uh, in the late summer to set deadlines and to uh, have a plan for outreach to you know, get the applications out. And then they go out and then we don't do, we, we then, it usually, the deadline is usually the Monday after Thanksgiving. And then right shortly after that, within a couple of weeks, um, early in December, we meet to review the applications and mm -hmm. make, uh, make our recommendations. So it's very intense for a couple of months and then light duty for the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thanks. Um, I think it's one, oh, yeah, Laura. Um, just noting, um, which we could think about or people could think about before our next meeting. So for city council, um, usually like March into April is when we do strategic planning for the year. So identify our key initiatives, um, you know, obviously keeping, I will keep like the project that we have ongoing, but if there's, there's anything else that really does shape like where we, you know, put time on the city council agendas and where, you know, it's both to keep I think council focused and so staff note can anticipate like <laughs> what's coming up for the year. So, you know, obviously other things come up, but it's, it's really helpful if there's anything we think we might be wanting to work on to get it in that, um, you know, as part of that process so that it's like on the radar of both the council and staff. Yeah, that's great. Um, I wonder, and I'll put this to you, Shana, maybe we could reserve some time at our next meeting to have a focused discussion about what we might um, kind of pass to the council. I feel like it's, the timing is a little bit goofy because we're gonna probably be getting the presentation from creative discourses about what their recommendations for the strategic plan should be like right as you're in the midst of it, you know? So I'm, I'm just feeling like nerd, like, want it, yes I feel like we should probably talk about it and that we're going to come out with these recommendations probably like right after <laughs> the city council does just time yeah wise. and a lot of it is like issues that people want to like do Dig work on it they're not like yeah. fleshed out so I you know it could be as simple as making sure that you know that space for moving yeah. forward with the recommendations of the creative discourse you know our CJAC um process are, are part of our strategic priorities for the year and then like without and then the details can come later um, so I think but so I think that could 
I was assume would be one of them that like I would be bringing forward. So like the way the process works is like di different counselors are putting ideas on the table and then we kind of all discuss them together and come up with a set of priorities and um, you know, whether or not that becomes a priority of the council writ large, like a lot of it gets captured as just things that are on the minds of various counselors. So um, I'm also recognizing, I, yeah, think, so I think that could most, be enough, but we could, if there's other yeah, things too, we could also. Most of the focus groups are gonna be completed by over the next two weeks. And so before we meet again, so even if we don't have the report, maybe we should just invite Keisha and, um, and Sue and maybe Tabitha to like, just do like an oral report back of like, okay, here are like the top th three things that are gonna be in our report. And so we can just kind of get that on the mm -hmm. docket. Um, I think that would be, that would be great. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'll put that on my agenda to talk to them about. Yeah, that'd be super helpful. Nice. Um, Cameron, any other city news to update on other than the election and passing? Mm -hmm. No. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I did. I will share it. Um, I'll email it to y'all. Uh, Creative Discourse asked the city for a sort of definitive statement that we will do X with the recommendations that come out of this. And, you know, um, that seemed not wrong by any means, but just we couldn't say with definitive like we can't, I, can't, I don't know what they're gonna recommend, right? I don't know if all of it could be possible or feasible um, just within our budget constraint, you know, also with our capacity as staff, um, you know, there's a reason we hired Creative Discourse. So, um, but I did write, so, so I, I wrote something <laughs> that I think answered a lot of their questions is how we will be held accountable for this work and how accountability is built into the city systems and what that looks like. So um, I wrote that document um, and sort of asked them to check the language and they were good with it. So I will share that with y'all. Um, that was done today. So um, I'll copy y'all on that email, but it's mostly just a statement that says we're gonna, I mean, we are taking this seriously. This is important to us. This is an ongoing process. Here's how we track a like accountability for doing these things. This is not work that's going into a void, which I think was the issue that they had, um, was that all, all of these folks are gonna come and put a lot of emotional um, energy and work into this for us. Uh, what are we gonna do with it, right? Are they gonna speak it into the void or is it gonna actually accomplish something? So really wanted to, to as much certainty as I can give that this sort of work will be ongoing. Um, you know, the only thing I couldn't promise was the immediacy of everything, right? Um, so uh, I will share that with y'all, but that's, I think, the only update I have. Thank you. Um, okay, um, so I think it's over to you, Shanna, for whatever updates you have to start us off on the creative discourse work. Yeah, so first of all, we're having the meetings. Woo! It's happening. Like <laughs> it's just been so long. And then I feel like all of a sudden they're all happening within like two weeks. And I was it was a little bit of Ugh! so um thank you for Cameron for and mostly for creative discourses for dealing with that. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I just wanted to um just kind of do a check-in about the scheduling that's happening and then the group the like the groupings of these groups that has been shifting around. So, um, and then wanting to talk a little bit about outreach, particularly for the March 9th focus group. And so, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> so um, for the um, affinity groups, as you guys have probably seen, um, what was initially gonna be 10 meetings is now three, is now seven, <laughs> not three. So <laughs> pushing together, kind of the um, folks with precarious housing um, or financial stress, people with disabilities and young people into having one meeting. Um, and so I can pull up, I'm sorry, I didn't do this beforehand. Um, just a little bit more of their, their rationale for that. Um, actually, I think I emailed over that ration, their, their rationale for, for why to do that. Um, and their plans are to have um, like breakout groups within that within that meeting. 
Um, so, um, de but depending on like how many people come. So just kind of overall, like we have all of these meetings scheduled, we have like a good number of people RSVP'd for each of them. Creative Discourses is now sending out the confirmations to the folks who had signed up and, you know, making sure that everyone knows what to expect um, and things like that, which is great. Um, and um, the only one where we are, where there's like not really enough people signed up to have it be what was envisioned was this, um, was this third this meeting where there's the three groups coming, coming, kind of coming together. There's just not a lot of RSVPs um, and just like not a lot of, of breadth within those RSVPs. So um, for the like young people cohort, um, I think they said they've been doing a lot of outreach, but that they, um, they're feeling like a lot young, young folks are just really tapped out and really, um, you know, zoomed out, I suppose. And so um, but they want you know, checking in on if we should do more concerted outreach there. And then I've gotten, so on all like the emails and stuff that's been going on from Porch Forum and things, I've been putting like my phone number on the bottom, um, or, you know, being like, or it's on the, I think it's on the, on the form. And I've gotten two calls from folks who are saying, why are you doing outreach for people with financial stress and housing insecurity if you need to have a computer to be able to participate in the calls and like to be able to sign up for the calls? And it's like, yeah, you're like, yep, that's that's real. And so talking with um, Creative Discourse on Monday, um, their suggestion was to have flyers to post around town. And so just, you know, recognizing this meeting is just next week. Um, and so I drafted the flyer that I touched the email, um, but that um, uh, Sue's here, there's all of these things are in like 54 different emails. So I'm sorry, <laughs> can't remember all of this. <clears throat> response was like, um, you know, like having the directness of inviting people to join without having to RSVP, but like putting the Zoom link, the phone number out there in such a public way would open us up for like Zoom bombers or for people to participate who maybe don't identify as being part of those groups. Like we would just have no control over what that could be, which could be really awful and really disruptive. Um, and so the you know suggestion that Sue had was like have people call a phone number or email someone to ask for the part the information to join the session. Um, but I just I so I was going to do this yesterday, but I just was feeling really stuck with how to do it, and I wanted to crowdsource from you guys um, about how to do this. So that was two things. So one for changing around the groupings and the timing of these meetings. Does all of that make sense? Does anyone have any questions with any of that? Um, just tell me again, the, the housing, housing disabilities, young people and people in financial stress, all four of those groups. Those were going to be three groups. So it was people with financial stress and housing insecurity. Disability is still its own? Was it what? No, no, no. That was like going to be one. Okay. And so it was those three people experiencing financial stress and housing insecurity, um, <clears throat> young people and people with disabilities are now like all going to be in one group. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had, I haven't had any response from the, the youth contacts that I reached out to. Um, I will try again today. Um, so I don't, I don't know if it's because I don't have relationships with folks and they don't trust what I'm bringing. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll just try again, but you know, crickets. Yeah. Um, I, I talked with Matt McLean, who is one of the three people who works with um, students doing stuff outside the school. Um, and he, he was right before school break. And so he said, well, we'll wait until the students are back in school. So you may get something this week or next week because mm -hmm. it's on his agenda now. And uh, he, he'll talk with the two who do um, off school, um, off campus internship for learning and then he has some other position within that group but anyway he said it was a good idea and he'd he'd work on it okay. so maybe maybe something will happen you know great and tell he'll us did you, were you he'll, he'll get he'll get back to me but i could call him and let him uh, d uh, talk to you directly if you'd prefer jeremy um yeah i mean 
you know what? I mean, it's, if he needs to talk to somebody, that's fine. But really, we just need him to promote it with the young people he knows and get them to sign up through that form. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't we don't need to have a lot of like steps in the process. If he can just if he's clear on things and can communicate it to whatever students he's working with and get them to sign up, then I think that's what we need. Okay. Well, um, maybe I'll be a little proactive and send him the form yeah. and um, say uh, he can distribute yeah. it. Right. And on it, it, you know, we're having people RSVP ahead of time, but we're just, for this one, I think we're just gonna have people sign up until the very last moment. Yeah. So, yeah. And Shana, if you want to put my work phone number on the flyer, if you don't wanna hand out your anybody's personal numbers, please do that. My number is a public number. Anyone can call me at any time. And and then you, I mean, so this is like all the logistics. So then would you like write down people's numbers or emails or just give them the Zoom or the phone call information like right then and there give when them, people call I could you? Just, would that yeah, I could just, yeah, I could do that. I don't have that Zoom information. So if you send- Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, but yeah, I can just give it to them right then. So that would be amazing. So okay, so put out put out can't like call this number for the information to join at this time. Um, okay. And I can just put that on the flyer. And then um, thank you. That'd be amazing. And then for the flyer, um, I um, I was just gonna I was gonna bring us back to like another way and to Bethany Church, not a stack, but like a few, <laughs> you know. Um, like was yeah, is there anywhere else that would be particularly helpful? I really want to do this today if possible, because it is less than a week away at this point, or a week away at this point. And so just um should should I print off extra stacks to bring to you guys to distribute or um, any other place that would be particularly useful? I would recommend the senior center because there are oh, some yeah. people who, who um, are in that situation. <clears throat> um, you'll also get folks <clears throat> if you put up the flyers in the bus stops and like the parklets downtown. Awesome. My other excuse for not doing this yesterday was it was so cold that the oh tape God, wasn't so <laughs> <laughs> but I think I can do it today. So you can use yesterday for as an excuse for lots of things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll try to I'll try to do that, and hopefully we'll have a plethora of responses, and we'll we'll have to be turning people away at the doors. But uh, not if we're not gonna. That's not gonna happen. So um, this will be great. Do you want help? <clears throat> putting them on today. I can help you. I live oh, in Montpelier. Awesome. You just need to give a time <clears throat> frame to me, then I can at least come and hold your hand. You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you want. Or like have one help. person hold it, one person tape it. Yeah. It's, um, it's up to you. Just let me know. Yeah, I was going to do it around like 4.30, if that works. Well, I was yeah. going to go print them at 4.30 and then, yeah, so maybe like 4.45. Fine. Whenever you cool. want, just email you. me the place and the time. I will be there. Per Thank you, Pellin. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then, I, Pellin, I also, you were going to, your daughter had some connections to some students that we're going to reach out to, too. And I think that was more for recruiting for participating in this. But I didn't know if you'd also reach out to them about coming to this meeting, because coming from the youth would also probably be really awesome if you. Uh, for our focus groups or this meeting you mean for the for the youth focus group yeah oh no i i didn't mention i can't ask yeah. this <clears throat> too i was just thinking of that one creative discourses was saying another yeah, place people. another place to go for youth is the uh, the basement uh, oh of course at, yeah at city, at city hall um yeah they are actually we've been letting them come in work technically closed but they do come in so um, okay great. Any other creative discourse updates, Janet? Um, Cameron, you were also on that call on Monday. Was there anything else to share? Or do you, maybe you wanted to share about how the first focus groups went too? 
don't know how much um, so the first yeah. focus group was with general staff um, that were not public safety oriented and I've talked to quite a few folks uh, I learned a lesson and that is no one reads my emails so um, a lot of folks were missing the context I think of what they were being asked to do um, I think a lot of folks thought it was a training so surprise surprise yeah. you know, they, um, so I'll, I'll I've my, one of my learning steps from that was to I'm going to go to the police and fire guys verbally tell them what is happening and what is expected of them. But all to say that went really well. Um, my staff was really excited about it. Um, I feel a lot of them were very invigorated by the conversation. Um, I also uh, had some action items come out of my staff. Um, one of them being, um, we only have a translation line that's paid through the police department. So other folks and other departments don't necessarily have access to that translation line and we're probably um, underserving communities that we don't even know we're underserving um, because why would you go into an office that you know isn't going to be able to talk to you so mm -hmm. um, we're working I'm working right now on talking to the school to see who they use and maybe um, either asking them to piggyback on that or expanding our contract with the language line that we use for our police department mm -hmm. that's available to everyone um, so I'm looking into the, what that means and what that would look like for us, um, but that is an immediate action that came out of that, that we're just gonna go ahead and do. So um, uh, that was exciting for me. Um, I think also there was a lot of folks who've never thought about this before in the context of their work. And, um, you know, I, I have received no negatives. So that's really great. And I'm really proud of my staff, so um, yeah. Looking forward to hearing what happens in the next one. That's a great outcome about expanding translation services. That's awesome. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Okay, shall we move on then to a fundraising discussion? Um, and I'm so a little bit at a loss of what our topic here is. So, Shana, do you want to? Sounds yeah, the context here is that um, we we needed more funds for doing the um, the compensation for participation, and <clears throat> excuse me. And so I um, uh, reached out to the grant tours um, to who are supporting this work, and they were like, "Yeah, it's part of the project. Like that makes of course." And so this was great. And then that means that we don't have funds right now to pay for the second round or like the next round of the contract with creative discourses. Um, and so knowing that, you know, the next um, fiscal year is coming up, you know, in July, um, but like that there were a couple of other steps that we were going to do between now and then. And at the last meeting, you know, Michael was saying like, I feel like we've really hit a wall with, with grant fundraising and like that there's not a lot more options. We can probably go back to the same groups that we have applied for. And we're still waiting to hear back from some grants as well. But that um, Michael, I was kind of saying like, I think we're gonna need to do more individual fundraising and like reaching out to folks in our communities. And so I just know we had done this like six months ago and it was wildly unsuccessful. And so I'm just wanting to like have the, like, how, how, like, how does this sound for folks? Like, should we slow, like, yeah, just having a conversation about it because like, do we need to slow down our timeline? Do we need to um, just to rely more on the city budget? Do we need to um, do more like direct one-on-one -on -one conversations rather than like holding fundraising events? Like, especially now that we're gonna have, like kind of as you had talked about Jeremy, we're gonna have like more specific things to fundraise about. Um, should we just hold off and like not even fundraise <laughs> until we like have the response from creative discourses um, and slow down in that way. But um, yeah, just is, is there any other fundraising next steps? But mo mostly we've, we've, we can use the funds for the stipends, which is great. I wonder about um, how, like if we could do a little test run with some individual outreach, like it's a very tangible thing to be like, can you contribute so we can sponsor so we can be hearing from people like here's what like it's a very real thing for people to help fund to like help ensure that people 
can participate and that we're hearing from people. And I don't know if people would be interested in funding that like as individuals or not. Um, I feel like the previous one was more like, we have a process, fund a process, yay. <laughs> um, which yeah. some of us get excited about. Um, so it seems worth trying to maybe do a little bit if we all identified, you know, three people that we know that we think might be interested and just see if we get traction. And if we're getting traction, then it seems like more effort. And if we're, if it's falling flat, we could like regroup via email or something. And we just like, um, I don't know, I would just be curious. Like, I feel like it's a kind of easy pitch and whether or not it's exciting to people, I don't know, but <laughs> um, for now. And then, but then I, yeah, I, I overall still think like we'll have better luck with bigger opportunities once we're a little bit farther along and have more specific things to be um, pitching to people. Like even though like expanding translation services, like that's like a very tangible thing that might cost money that could we support that kind of stuff that, um, but I don't know, it's one idea. Thanks, Michael. Uh, I, um, um, I agree with that. I, I think that uh, the effort to try to get people to come to another Zoom meeting um, didn't work. And you know, there are just too many Zoom meetings going on. And I think the most effective way, and everybody who raises funds says this, is you go to individuals uh, because there you're using your relationship with them to, uh, which is a trust relationship, basically. If they, if they think that you're on the level with them, then you'll be able to get contributions. So I'd like to, I, I would suggest uh, what, what I think Shana was getting at, if everybody, if each of us chose three people and send that list to Shana so that we don't have duplication um, and, um, and then, you know, make a commitment to contact three people um, and, you know, in the next, I don't know if we can do it in two weeks, but um, in, you know, within, within a month anyway, um, uh, and see what comes of that. And, and if it works well, then we just, do, you know, continue on that three more people and stuff like that. Um, Cause we're not asking for a tremendous amount of money for this. Um, it, uh, if the idea is that we're using the money for the, this, the, the stipends to have people participate or if we're starting to use it to launch projects, I think that that's a far more convincing uh, yeah. line then we need to hire a consultant well and so this is this is a so we can use the grant funds that we got for the stipends right so we're we're actually we are good on site i mean that's right now. Yeah. but yeah. I, th I just think that pitch because i mean anything that we don't have right. to use the grants for we could use for creative discourse so right. or, or the other work so to me like saying like you can sponsor one people or two people or three people with 150 dollars right. like have it be really specific. I, I, I feel like that pitch would be easier to yeah. make. And so, um, you know, and it's just like, yeah, um, great. And then frees up the money for other purposes from the grant. That makes sense to me. And then, right, and then we can circle back on this conversation after we have the proposals and see if there's additional um, funders or whatever to, to ask to support that work. Okay. I think that sounds good. I can commit to doing that. I commit to doing that. Does somebody, maybe if whoever, or if somebody thinks they would have time to like write up a few talking points or if there was like a little blurb follow up with the link to how people can contribute, that would be super helpful. I can send yeah. what, um, put in the, um, yeah, I can, I can do that. <laughs> but Thank feel free you. to make it your own because also I'm not not a writer so sounds good um shall we move on to recruitment updates any anyone have anything to share on that that front um I have tried to socialize this um through contacts at the Unitarian Church particularly in its racial justice group. Um, I, I can keep kind of pushing on that. I haven't heard from anyone saying, yes, sign me up. Um, so that's, that's all I have to report on that front.
Does anyone have any other ideas about what other channels we might pursue to recruit folks to the committee? When I spoke, when I spoke with Matt McLean, I also mentioned that we needed, you know, we were looking for um, young members for the, uh, the committee, and he said he'd keep that in mind too. Yeah. Good. I'm also just wondering if we can flag this for Keisha and Sue to be like, if there's anyone who is really awesome at the meetings, let us, like if that's going to be a breach of confidentiality or um, if it's just like a, oh, hey, we think you should reach out to like this person. The, yeah, at the end, you yeah. can always ask them to just be like, hey, you know, if this is work that you're interested in continuing with the city, they're always, you know, you're welcome to put in an application, mm -hmm. pitch it at the end. Could ask them to do that. Yeah. Makes sense. We don't have to. Mm -hmm. Oh. You okay? Oh, you're still there. My computer just. <laughs> Blue screened of death. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, any other thoughts about recruitment for today? Weird. Okay. I, yeah, I'll send that email to um okay. to Keisha and Sue. Yep. All right. Um, so moving on to. Um, our kind of catch all other business. Does anyone have anything else to raise for the group today? Oh, I did, I did note that the website has been updated. Thanks, Cameron, for making that happen. So we are current. <laughs> Thanks. That looks that. good. Great. Thanks for running such an efficient meeting. Awesome. Well, <laughs> the agenda was there. I just read it. Um, um, I'll just say I just put in the chat what I've been putting at the bottom of the invitations that I've been like blasting out to everyone. Um, so if that is um, helpful language, feel free to snag it. Thank you. Donate $50 today to stipend one participant or $700 to sponsor a whole focus group. And I'll say we have gotten two um, donations in on our um, PayPal um, during this time. So that's great. Oh, cool. Oh, that's great. Sorry, I should have said that during the fundraising update. Um, <laughs> cool. All right, well, I think right. there's no other business that's, that takes us out to the end. All right. Appreciate well, all y'all. This is such hard work. Weeks. So yeah. it's moving. Okay. Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Thanks all. all right. See you soon. Have a Bye. good week. See you later. Yeah.